expressing my opinions, but what we're doing here is bigger than that. These are conversations that need to be had in an unfiltered way. Drag racing's all I've ever done. It's all I care to do. I respect the history, I appreciate how far we've come, but I want more for this sport, and I'll fight for it. It's uncut, it's unfiltered, this is the show of shows. The biggest names in drag racing. No holds barred. This is the great American motorsport, drag racing. Prove me wrong, I'll wait. Hey gang, Wes Buck here, Drag Illustrated Magazine, checking in. It is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, episode 336. It's getting serious in here, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us, as always. We got a lot to cover. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been on here. I feel like all sorts of things have happened since the last time we joined you here around Drag Racing's water cooler, if you will. Uh, again, as always, remember to click like, click share, click subscribe, no matter where you're watching. If you're listening on the audio version via your favorite, po favorite podcast app, leave us a review, leave us a rating. It means a lot, makes a difference to us. And uh, again, thank you guys for being a part of this. It wouldn't be any fun to do if we didn't have you all here to be be here with us. Uh, without any further ado, I want to dive right into it. We got a ton of stuff to cover today. We got Justin Little Country Swanstrom, star of No Prep Kings, uh, joining us. Actually, fresh off a really impressive performance at the 2024 running of the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod. I'm excited to talk to him about that. We've got, I don't know what season this would even be of No Prep Kings. I'm sure he'll know, but I we're staring down the barrel of the start of the PDRA season, the NMCA season, the Midwest Drag Racing season. Uh, all sorts of things. And of course, no prep king. So I'd love to talk to Justin about all of that, what he's got in the works for 2024 and beyond. But uh, before we get to that, let me bring Mike and JT on here. What's up, JT? I mean, I, it's great to I'm see back. you again. I know. Right? People were worried about JT, that oh, he had either goodness. been fired or was in jail or <laughs> somewhere. So I don't know. Welcome it's, back. It might be impossible to get fired from Drag Illustrated. I think, it. yeah, you have to work really hard to do that. I mean, you have to freaking work at it. Yeah. I mean, well, I feel it, like I have worked at it. You, you it, really it, have. It's been done. It, I mean, it's been done. Um, but it, it does take a lot to get fired here, man. It's, <laughs> you know, I, I think about that. And I was actually thinking about that last night is that it's how much we love this stuff. Because I, I actually, my wife and I were talking last night and she's like, I was talking on the phone to somebody about drag racing. And she's like, do you ever get tired of talking about this? And I go, no, not, not even a little bit. Like it's, <laughs> it's I, you know, I wake up looking to, I'm looking for opportunities. So if Look anybody's job, interested, I'm literally, I'm yeah. looking for Price opportunities. Sins. I mean, like, oh my gosh. With, with Wes, I mean, it's, it's like everything, everything you do revolves around it. Yeah. There's yeah. No I actually like when you start talking about golf and whatnot, I halfway get jealous. I'm like, I guess that's why I got a ukulele. You know what I mean? I'm like, I gotta have something else. That like, thing out. I won't, I won't, I won't. But it is, uh, it's crazy to think about. And I, 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 do you want me to? Okay. Yeah. I, I can get it. It's within, I can, I can literally reach I just it. Know, I like, just know the rhythm. Yeah. Um, I've learned some other strumming patterns. Admittedly, there for a while, I was pretty locked into what they call the island strum. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it's an island vibe. Yeah, you know, and that was like the first one I learned. It sure is. It put you on an island. <laughs> oh, shut up, JT. You're so mean, bro. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, no, I love my freaking ukulele. I really do, man. It's I like know. one of my favorite things to do. It's uh, it's a little bit of a stress reliever for me, I think. Like what I've found for me personally is I can't help but be doing something. Like even when it's almost embarrassing, right? Like you sit down to watch a show or watch a football game or watch, I've been watching a lot of basketball, right? NCAA March Madness, love this time of year, love all the energy that comes from college sports. And I can't help but sit there and watch the game. And I watch like two or three possessions and pick up my phone. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And second and screen like, action. They second actually, I, they know that. I think Netflix is, is probably the best at acknowledging that you, this is, you know primary or secondary there are two screens involved maybe three sometimes if you've got the ipad the phone <laughs> and the tv computer, yeah uh, guilty or, is yeah. charged yeah guilty <laughs> you know what i mean like there's been several times i've had like a game going on or watching a movie 
got some sort of sporting event going on on my laptop and then I'm working on my iPad taking notes. You know oh, what I, I mean? I, I have a lot of like, times I have my iPad or, or phone, you know, like propped up so I can catch a game or whatever. Say it's, say it's at night and the Thursday night game or football game's on, you know, so the family can still watch TV, you know, and, I, and I'm not missing out on the game either, you know. Right. But then no, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you almost need three we, we have, I want to talk shit to my friends too, you know. Yeah, well, there, there is no downtime. There's no free time anymore. We're like rewiring our brains with this. I got your ukulele. You're gonna have to get one of those. You know, like they do. I've got one. You know, no, I don't have that. No, I don't have one of those. No, but I, I mean, it it has been nice because it it satisfies my desire to have to be doing something with my hands, um, and I can watch TV or whatever, watch racing or whatever I'm watching, and I can still practice my uke. So we won't talk about what you did with your hands before you got the. I know. I was just thinking like this. This is headed in the wrong direction. (laughs) What do you think? Hotel staff thinks of us, you know, like everybody's rolling <laughs> in, you know, drinking, everybody's covered Don't even get in, that started. in rubber and oil and, you know, everybody's wearing black and then they sit down and we plop down. Cause we usually take over a lounge, you know, or the nightcap. Lobby. Yeah. Nightcap. Night. After, after world series, the last night of world series, we sat down in the lobby until five 30 in the morning. Yeah. I didn't. I that's went a to new, bed. That's a new record. Yeah. You didn't come back bed. down. I thought well, about it. Yeah, yeah, I know, even like, even me, Nancy like, came back down, dude. Right. And, yeah, and you've got sorry. your ukulele playing and everybody's covered in, in, in <laughs> you're just, just dirty as hell. You know, I mean, I wonder what they do think. Well, that one girl, you know, I can't remember her name, but yeah, she, she kind of, she kind of sat down and part, partook with us. You know, Ashley, saying, don't camp. say names. Don't say names. Yeah. And she, but she, I asked her the next day, I was like, oh, I was afraid you got fired. And she goes, oh no, you can't get fired around here. They can't get anybody else to show up. It's like Drag like, Illustrated. Oh, same yeah, thing. We'll see you tonight again. Can't get fired because no one else will show up. It's the same yeah, deal, D. That's it's crazy. Oh, that's the times we live in though. It is, dude. And it's like, uh, I, for me, and I go back to that all the time. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today and just kind of riff on for a little bit was just what a hell of a start we've had to the year, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, um, feels like it's halfway over, pun. but it's it really just started. It's really just starting. Cause I, I was talking to Tyler Crossnow last night and he's like trying to get him lined up to be on the show next week. Guys, remember set your calendars, or whatever, to join us next Wednesday, because we'll have Tyler Crossnow on here to talk a little bit about the start of the 2024 PDRA drag racing season. But damn, between you and Tyler, uh, hey, T, I think we got next week off. Yeah, you guys might have next There will be no oxygen left on the No, that's no. perfect. Take it all, Mike. Huh? Yeah, we take that's it all. Perfect. We take <laughs> yeah. it all. I'm Me cool and T will go it. golfing. No, nah, I'm, <laughs> but it's crazy to think about how much has already happened here in 2024. I mean, I think about starting the season with the Skag Power Equipment Pro Superstar Shootout, rolling immediately into the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod, going directly to Lights Out 15, going then to the NHRA Gator Nationals. And there's one thing that those events all had in common. What I think is kind of interesting is they all happen in a very similar part of the country, right? They all happen kind of in the southeast region, and they're all packed. I mean, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, wall-to-wall humanity, and it's really representative of a wide variety of different types of drag racing. And it just, to me, it reminded me of the abundance that exists here in this sport, like in here, in the opportunity that exists in drag racing, like there will be a day in the future when we look back and go, Oh my goodness. Like these were this, that, that was what we always wished for. I mean, it's not like one thing is thriving and everything else is falling apart. There's tons of great things going on. And it's just like, if we all took a second, and decided throughout the rest of the year and throughout the rest of our lives, maybe we're going to walk around with our chest puffed out a little bit because drag racing's on the come up. I mean, this is, we're in a time right now where I think drag racing is, this has to be the high water mark since like the, the, the golden era or so to speak, the, or the infancy of drag racing when it was explosive growth and all those things. And we had rising stars and it was a new thing. But for me, I can't help but feel 70 years into organized drag racing to still be be maintaining this level of participation, this level of fanfare and seemingly growing across the board. Like I continue to hear about uh, solid television ratings. I continue to hear about uh, in the amount of content that is created in our sport is absolutely at an all time high. Like, never seen this many interviews, never seen this many vlogs, never seen this many racers active on social. There's all sorts of channels starting up on YouTube. I saw Clay Milliken's sister is now doing breakdowns following each NHRA race. Like that's really, I I can't say enough about that type of stuff, 
I mean, this is a really, really special moment in the sport of drag racing. And I think there's tons more to go. Like, I think we have so far to go, but I tell you guys all the time and I tell our team like, man, what a, what an awesome moment to be able to be a part of something that is so developed right in, in, in entrenched. Like there's so many people that are entrenched in this community, but still know that there's so much left to do. Like that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, right? Like I'm going, this is a big deal to have the opportunity after all that's gone on, all that's been accomplished in the sport of drag racing to still have so much opportunity. Like I don't see an end in sight. I, I think that we are moments away from <clears throat> redefining where drag racing exists in the in in the motorsports landscape and maybe in the general sporting landscape because i can't help but think about some of the parallels that exist with like mixed martial arts and boxing i mean i don't think 20 years ago you never in your wildest dreams would have thought that mma would surpass boxing like in the the lay of the land of combat sports and I think right now and for the last several years, it's been like this, oh, drag racing is never going to be, it, we're never going to be NASCAR. We're never going to be Formula One. And we don't want to be those things. Don't get, don't get it twisted. We don't want to be those things. But to think that we can't somehow be mentioned in the same breath as them, ha can't have some level of fanfare and excitement and sponsorship involvement that those sports enjoy, I think it's short-sighted. I really think that opportunity exists. And I wouldn't be at all surprised in the next few years to see that type of thing happen because it's it's happening right now slowly but surely it's happening right now and i think all like our drag racing fans i think about the fans down there in the southeast region like people like me that bought tickets to go to these races and traveled across the country if not the world to be a part of them i can't I, so many race or so many race fans at the pro superstar shootout at the world series of pro mod that told me hey man i'm here for a month i flew over from egypt and I'm going to be here. We got, we, yeah, we've I'm got someone here on the races. on the comments says that she's been to a, a live race once a month since December. She lives near BMP. That's the spot to oh, be yeah, in Mary. for yeah, the, for the past there. three or four months. Yeah, if you live down there, you might as well just move in. Oh, yeah. There ain't no joke, They need man. suites, I mean, like on-site apartments, like uh, like the SMI properties have. You know they have that, right? Like at Charlotte Motor Speedway and some of these other deals that you can buy a condo and live there. Really? Just yeah, I just like throwing that. it out in case you're ever in the real estate market. <laughs> they've they've been doing that for 30 years, but let's. I ain't buying it at a NASCAR I having, track. I was having clothes delivered there. <laughs> <laughs> we were having. Dude, I ordered. Delivered. I ordered my daughter some slime, and accidentally, my predetermined address was Bradenton Motorsports Park. Yeah, I had so, to cancel a delivery because so I had day, that same Sophia thing is like, hey. Sophia or dad, when, when is my slime going to get here? And I'm like, well, it says it's in route. It's going to be here any day. I don't know. And so like days go by, meanwhile, days go by. And meanwhile, I, David, in, David anyway, yeah. at BMP is down there just playing with slime. Playing with slime, <laughs> ASMR, right? <laughs> you know, making pretzels. And uh, I finally figured it out because I'm like, I typed in the tracking number. And I'm like, okay, she's going to get like pissed if I don't get this figured out. So I look it up and it's like, sure enough, this there's a package uh, full of slime at uh, Bradenton Motorsports Park. Maybe I can send justin over to grab it and ship it ship it up to me she'd be thrilled i actually yeah. just called vic and i said hey man i know your little girls are are young but why don't you give them all that slime they may make a mess but they'll probably surely enjoy it so anyways man well hey let's not uh beat around the bush here we got justin swanstrom in the green room justin's like i mean he's like i mean he's rocking sunglasses we got pro uh, mod stack like yeah. firewood in the got background we got sunglasses inside that's just yeah you know it's over there I, i've always wanted to do that because I can't look at the camera. Yeah. Look, I'll go get him. Maybe, I'll go maybe get it's a trick. Go get yours. Yeah, maybe it's a tip. <laughs> okay, whenever we get him on here, go Let's full screen him with on. him and I'll go get my sunglasses. <laughs> I've always wanted to wear my sunglasses on this show. I really oh, yeah. have. Red ones, too. Red. Ooh, what, what brand are those? What good. are those? What's going on, guys? What, what brand, brand are, are those sunglasses? Uh, they're the JSR Swan Gangs. Oh, Dang. of course they are. Swan gang brand, shit. I brand I brand myself around everything. Oh, I like it, man. What's up, uh, Justin? What are you working uh, on? Uh, we're working on cars in the shop. Uh, can y'all hear me really good? I can Very hear well. You? Yeah. All right. Perfect. It's been a while since I've done a podcast. So, but Same uh, here, I'm man. Out, we about we're out here in the <laughs> shop, and it's fucking horrible here. When y'all were here for the you know the pro mod race, the weather was pretty good. The humidity out right now is ninety five percent. Oh. Ooh. 
So it is horrible right now. So we got the shop doors open and it's kind of got that. It's like if you look in the sky, it's either about to completely storm or just, you know, shine bright. So we haven't it figured snowed out which here way yesterday. Go. Freaking snow. Can you, yeah. I will I will say this. I will take I will take uh the heat over cold any day of the week. Maybe I don't same. care how hot it is, I'll sit here and complain about it, but I'll take the heat over snow any day of the week. So, I couldn't agree more, man. We said so that we, about the weather at BMP too. It's like we, we were there in February and March, and we're like, all right, we're we're good, we're done now. We got the good out of this weather here. We'll come back. Maybe we'll see you in the fall. Man, yeah. I wanted to ask you about World Series of Pro Mod because uh, that was a big deal to us, Justin. Like when we made the deal to bring you in and have you uh, get you an invite to the World Series of Pro Mod. You called me and like the level of commitment that you were willing to make going out, securing a car, like doing all the work to get it ready to go in a couple of days. Like it's, I, I can't say enough about it, man. And I was really impressed with how you guys performed. Uh, I love seeing you guys, your mom and dad are just incredible people, your whole crew, like the, it's awesome people to be around. Uh, so thank you, man. I haven't, I mean, we've talked a little bit after the race, but I just wanted, you know, here in front of the world, tell you that it really meant a lot to me. And I think it added some buzz. There is no doubt that the, the fanfare that no prep Kings, and street outlaws and in all of these uh, different properties have created is our needle movers. I mean, absolutely make a difference. And it was fantastic to have you there and kind of merge those worlds. Chuck Parker, uh, we had Lizzie and Jeff there. I mean, obviously they were part of a, of a match race, not in pro mods, but maybe in the future, you never know. Like that's, that's my goal. No, I, I agree. Um, it was, it was, it was a fun experience. There was a lot of things that happened um, that week. First off, I mean, I've already kind of, talk to you a little bit and you know there's things that i want to do in the future and i was happy that i was able to get the invite i know there were some people online um i i see everything online so there were some people that was a little <laughs> upset that like i got an invite um because like oh he's never ran pro mod he doesn't do this he's a no prep racer da 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 and i mean i don't let that none of that shit get to me because i'm just going to continue to keep doing what i'm doing to help build my brand to keep moving forward um so when i reached out to you I was, I think I've proven time and time again that I, I am determined in this sport. I, I put everything I have into this sport and I want to keep growing it, not for myself, but for everybody as well, too. I want people to be able to look at what I build and say, hey, I could possibly do that as well. So that was the game plan going with it. And I was very straightforward with you whenever I sent you that text and I said, hey, is there a possibility that I could get an invite? Because and you you can, you know, uh, cite me on this is that I was basically just saying, like, if I get the invite, I'm going to make it happen for y'all and I'm going to be able to put a car together and do that. But if I just hypothetically, if I wasn't able to get an invite, I didn't want to go through all the trouble and the late nights and doing all that to be able to do that. Well, then you come back to me and you're like and you're honest with it. You're like, well, I don't want to post it and I don't want to publish it if you're not going to make it because one. That makes me look bad. That makes you all look bad. It makes Drag Illustrator look bad. So I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and go through with the process. It's something that I'm wanting to do in the future. Let me just go ahead and start doing with it. I got the car, got it back to the uh, chassis shop, started working on it. And I was literally sending you photos after photos. I'm trying to basically make you... Uh, I don't know if you already had your mind made up or not, but like just trying to give you insight like, hey, I'm really trying to do this. And if I could just get an invite, it'd be great. And then the invite came and it made everything 100 percent good. Like there's a lot of people that thought maybe I had the invite before I went through and did this wild uh, extravaganza. And I didn't. I didn't have the invite at all. But once I started to put stuff together and then the invite came, it kind of relaxed me because uh, there's everybody's out there the same way. You know, you put a lot of work in, you do a lot of stuff to try to get it done. And then if there's no ultimate goal there, it, it kind of is heartbreaking. So I was excited to be able to get an invite. I do appreciate y'all. Uh, I completely shitted it up that week. Um, I heard a lot of stuff. Um, I will. I told Wes, I probably. You beat you know, J.R. Gray. I did beat J.R. Gray. We'll, we'll get into that talking here in a little bit. That's, going, that's something that I want to talk about. But I did tell Wes whenever uh, I was just joking because, you know, I'm happy that I got the invite. It was an awesome race to be a part of. Uh, I feel like what y'all are doing and growing the sport, it's fucking amazing. But I did spend about uh, not counting the car and everything, but just in motors and everything to get ready for my NPK season. I'm about fifty thousand dollars in the hole. So like now that I look at it, 
I probably would have told Wes, "Hey, man, just <laughs> just don't send me the invite," <laughs> like because it was it was pretty bad. Like dude, we we just had a rough week, and sometimes you get into that. And I tell people all the time, I literally knock on wood. Hopefully, everything's behind me now. I literally hurt more shit that week than I did all last year racing. It's like crazy. every pass that I made, just something was going on. Something was going wrong. We were tearing the motor apart. We were hurting holes. And then that last one, I ran against J.R. Gray, even though I busted his ass and put him on the trailer, that I, I still was, I grenaded it. So I had to do that. And then we stayed up all night, got it where we think, okay, this is going to be the run for us. And everything was good. Come out there. Uh, I think it was Saturday morning. It was the the uh, fourth round of qualifying or something. Yep. And, you know, I told dad, I said, this is going to be it. If it smokes the tires, let it smoke the tires. But we have to go for it. We can't run 72, 73. Because I think at that time, I think the bump was like a 67, 66. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, we had to run a number. So, like, the fastest we've been all week was, like, 965, 967, 60 foot. Like, we were just, like, slowly creeping on it. But we were having a lot of issues. Well, that run there, we went 930 flat, 60 foot. But then it decided it, my rods wanted to exit the motor. <laughs> so like it was just bad luck after bad luck after bad luck. So it did cost a lot, but we did learn a lot too. And that was one of my things I've, I've expressed a lot on my fan base is uh, I wanted to get a pro mod uh, one, because I do feel my team, my dad, me, my guys, we can run with the uh, pro mod class. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people talk shit and say that the MPK drivers are not fast and that they're, they don't run good and blah, 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 because we have the boards off and really nobody knows the times. But I wanted to get a pro mod on two things. One, because my dad, you know, a lot of people have talked shit to him talking about how, you know, he can't tune up there with the elites and all that. I feel like he can. I feel like we can run just as fast right there with them. We just had a shitty week and we'll, we're going to give it another shot. Um, I got the car behind me. I'm gearing up, get ready for MPK, but I do plan on hitting another pro mod race this year or multiple pro mod races, as long as my schedule allows it to be able to go forward, just because I want to prove a point. And uh, we'll see how it goes out. See, I told you, Florida weather. Here comes oh, the that's rain. That's crazy. Thunder. Here comes the rain, man. I was wondering what that was like thunder. Oh, my yeah. goodness. It just, well, dude, it I mean, the, well, I just want to tell you that I appreciate you being a part of down it. The hatches. Because, Hold on. Oh, yeah. He's I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. Oh, he can still hear. Um, but it, it really does. To me, I think it matters. Like we, we can't, we have to put our money where our mouth is. Cause like we took the same amount of shit. Like I had people text me like, how's Justin Swanstrom get an invite to this race? And it's like, man, it, it a, it's 100% subjective. Yeah. So it's just like, it's the people that we think believe and fit with what we're doing. And it's like, and I would, not everybody does. And it's not a bad thing. Right. We, like I've actually said that since <clears throat> day one too. I think it's gotten yeah. the, the, the uh, misconception that, it's really just taking the, you know, the standings of the pro mod division and running down through the top 64. We we're, we're open to trying to bring people in from like, we've talked about trying to get Antron Brown in a pro mod or something like that. Guys from outside the pro mod world, you want the best drivers meld together in the world series of pro mod. Just, that's what it's about. They just happen to be driving pro mods. Yeah, yeah man. You know, I mean, that's what I want. That's, that's I want car we're driving but, the but, best guys yeah. in the world and gals, the best in the world in one location. Like, that's what I want. Selfishly, as a fan, as a promoter, like, I want to put in front of the fans the best possible show that I can. And I have to have the best possible guys, the best possible cars. I mean, it, it's so, so important to the, to the, to the ultimate show, the product that we deliver to the fans. And I'm also looking for stories. I'm looking for things that are going to move the needle. I mean, it's like they, I mean, they, they were going to, UFC was going to have Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg fight. Like neither one of those guys need to be fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's just the notion that that was going to get people talking. Right. I mean, it probably would have been the biggest fight in the world, in the history of the world. And you need all these different personalities and all these different <laughs> backgrounds. And you need, you really need that. Because otherwise, it's just like every other drag race. Yes, yeah, that's and what makes it different. Hey, uh, Justin, what do you think about? You were talking about how much you know carnage you had. Do you think that that's just you guys pushing your car that hard because of the the event, because of the number? You know, not even really just the um, number that's on the board for the bump, but just the the you know the field that you're seeing, the guys you're running against, and knowing you got to bring it, or is it just you guys kind of trying to find your way with the pro mod combination? So, so it's, it's similar or it's, uh, it's both. Um, let me, let me start with this is 
the the pro mods a fast field. I'm not gonna lie. I think what was number one a 59. I think number two yeah. was a 60 or 32 was a 66. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, and I knew that going in. I I told my dad. I told my guys. I bet you you're gonna have. T- I don't know how many cars there was, but I bet you're gonna have 10 cars that's gonna run a 65. That nothing's gonna separate. It's the fastest field out there being a part of that. So it was already gonna be hard there. Uh, one thing I will say is it's a lot different in weight than what I normally run for MPK. So I was a little bit behind the eight ball because my setups are, and everything I got gear ratios, transmission ratios, converter ratios are set up for that 2,800 pound car that we run over there on a no prep surface. Um, I it's, it's the right stuff. It just, I don't think we had the right combo put together to be able to do that. Now, granted, we went a 72, but we only went like 198 mile an hour. We were able to click off 201, but where all these other guys and girls are running 205, 207, some running 209. So that's where we said we got to figure out what we got to do to be able to get to that point. Um, so I think it was a little bit mixture of both of, you know, the class being extremely hard. I knew my, my goal there was to just get qualified. Um, I feel like there's there's some drivers out there, but I feel like I have a little bit more limelight on me than some others like granted okay there was there was 33 drivers that didn't make it in there was 33 mm-hmm. or i think how many was yeah. there left Wes? 33 yeah yep. i'll be honest with you i ain't seen one fucking post about the other 32 drivers that didn't make it in the field <laughs> i've seen probably 50 posts about how justin swanson fucking sucks and he can't make it in the field <laughs> and like it's just part of it but so that's what I was doing. I was just trying. I really wanted to do it for my team, do it for us. And we just came up short. And it wasn't like it was not going to be a walk in the park. I mean, I tell people all the time that's 59 to 66 or like I even and there's some fans that are like, well, if you did go, cause we did go 70 testing. They're like, if you go 70, you can go 66. And what I try to tell people a 70 to a 69 or a 68 is like light years in the sport that we're doing it's not so it's not like running 405 and then going 398 i mean yes that's hard too but when you go faster and faster i mean take stevie jackson i mean dude, he went 350s for a couple passes two different events and then now he just cut off what do you go 348 or 349 mm-hmm. yeah. 348 like yes it's there but you got to have everything line up perfect to be able to get that and that's where some people don't understand is they think it just it should happen or you know, I've seen the comments about, well, if they would have invited Ryan Martin, he definitely would have won the whole deal. I think Ryan would do good. I've even commented on it too. Will he do good? He has a great team behind him. He probably would have did better than me. I'm not going to lie. But he's not just going to come in there and just dominate and just just kick everybody's ass. It doesn't work like that. But I don't know. It, it, we'll see how it plays out again. If uh, I Hopefully, y'all do another deal, and uh, if I get invited to be a part of it, I'd love to be able to do it and keep working on our program. Um, I learned a lot that weekend with weight-wise. You know, I went at 2,800. I was able to be 26, seven, uh, 2675 there. So, you know, that's 125 pounds difference, and it does change a lot in the ratios that we run and the converters and all that, it makes everything a lot tighter. It makes the track a little bit trickier for us because everything's wanting to tighten up. So um, it was a learning curve. I was, I was excited to do it. And I think I'll be a little bit more prepared next time I try to run to pro mod again. You well, I'll great, tell you, you like, uh, story, I, mean, I, I mean, for 16 yeah. runs or something like little over a dozen runs on a brand new car. Like I, I was impressed to be honest. And I, I thought you guys were poised. You put on a good show. Like, I think and that that's matchup with JR Gray was one of the best of the rival <laughs> well, night matchups. So, like, yeah. JR so Gray, I was, he, he I was, was even pushing was it hard, too. That. Yeah, I was excited about it. And, and listen, JR, he talked a lot of shit uh, moving up to that <laughs> event and, you know, doing all that. And that's why I told Dad, I mean, yes, I wanted to get qualified, but two, I wanted. I wanted to run for some money. I wanted to I wanted to have hard earned cash. I, I brought money to the event. I was either willing to lose or I was going to win it. That was the game plan moving forward. Um, you know, I busted them on the tree, just like I told them I was going to do that. I think I had five or six numbers on the tree and then I, I led the whole way down the track. So it worked out good there, but, uh, yeah, that, that was a, that was a fun race. Too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I, I can tell you what happened was, and I've, I've been in that situation before. He don't want to admit it, but because I got out of there so fucking quick on the tree, he was looking at me going down the track the whole way. He just drove over to the center line of the track. And it happens to a lot of drivers, not going to lie. 
But when you see someone out there far in front of you, trust me, you look over and you start tracking over that way. That's kind of the reason why I wear blinders in the car. You literally would have to be four car lengths out in front of me before I can see where you're at. Just because point. of that, because I have a bad, uh, you know, I have a bad habit of doing that. I've wrecked a car doing that before. Somebody gets a jump, gets out in front of you, and you think you're running them down, which you might be. But if you're looking over to your left or to your right, sooner or later, your car is going to start driving yeah. left or right, too. That's so, actually what happened um, to me when I was running Wes in our Mustang challenge <laughs> on Sunday oh morning. God. He treated the shit out of me. And I don't think I ever looked out of the windshield of that damn thing. I'm just watching you over there. It, it just was. Thinking, and I, and I, I was wanting this thing to go quarter mile. If it was quarter mile, I'd have caught your ass, Wes, oh, just, so, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, hey, uh, I want to make this official. Happens. March, uh, February 27th. Uh, what is it? February 27th, 28th, March 1st, World Series of Pro Mod returns to Bradenton Motorsports Park. Three days that will live forever in infamy. Justin, here's your invite. You're, 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 you're a part of what we do. Uh, I'm really proud of what you've built, and we'd mm -hmm. love to have you back, man. So we'll make Great. it official in the coming weeks, but we, we would love to have you back and see you that would take be, another uh, crack at this thing. Yeah, I, I'd love to be able to do it. I tell you right now, I think the most uh, the coolest thing that was going on, I, even, I have it on my camera on the roof camera, but I was able to see it in the car, you know, wearing a Hans, you don't really get to look a whole lot, but every time I came up, Wes came to the front of the car and either threw some kind of guns up or something, <laughs> trying to excite. Like I, that was one thing that I was kind of like, you know what, this motherfucker's out here throwing guns up and I'm out here blowing shit up. Like I wish we could put a run together so that when he's excited as he is, it means something going into it. So the good thing about it was, is he was able to come to the front of the car show his excitement and then we were able to go out there and bust jr gray's ass so i can say this that jr gray nhra whatever he got his asshole beat that night <laughs> <laughs> no man it's and i just wanted to be like that like i pulled back on it you know when we get down to like saturday night final qualifying or whatever going into race day i i've been around racing my whole life it's all i've ever done so i recognize that people have routines and mm -hmm. i don't want to screw up anybody's routine but while we're qualifying and there's still plenty of opportunity i want you guys to know that i'm i'm paying attention i'm watching well, and, and, and and i want a, you to be fired up like i want you to be a, that's a that's a good thing and and, and we kind of talk you came over to my pit and i i enjoy you doing that i like that you do that because you really show um that you really give a shit about what we're doing and about the sport that we're running and out there doing it. If you're not excited about it, how is any of the drivers going to be excited about it? And that's one thing that I try to do. And I try to tell my guys, like, if you don't, if you don't give a fuck about something, everybody else is not going to give a fuck about it. That's it's so it. true, man. It's just part of it. I don't care if you're out there driving your grandma's Pinto and you, and whatever. Make that thing like a rocket ship, the most fastest thing in the world. And I guarantee you people will support it and be like, holy shit, that's part of it. I'm telling you, it don't matter what you do in this world or what you got going on. If you don't care about it, then it's never going to succeed. And, it and reeks. we, we it say reeks. that all the I time, mean, Wes. I mean, you, you say I it all say the time. It. I mean, I literally leading tell up my to guys. both of these events. I mean, I, that was, a, was that was a, one of the speeches that we kind of gave to the group or Wes, you did is that it, it, it hinges on us. If we're not excited about these events, this yeah. is what we bring to the table. And if we're not excited and we're not all in, we can't expect these guys to be. I, I well, and, that, and that's one thing I said is that the, the rival night, the, the grudge races, and I even kind of told this to Wes too. Yes, there was some good grudge races going on, but like there was a few people that I went up to and be like, hey, who are you racing? Uh, not, not really sure yet. Or, hey, how much are y'all running for? Well, we haven't really talked about it yet. We're just going to go out there and make a pass. Like there was, there was some of them that wasn't really excited about it. They were, it was just another run to them. They're not used and the to way, that. They're and not the, used yeah, to and, that. And they're not, like and I agree with that. They're not used to it, but there's something that like, I just wanted to be like, well, fuck, if you're Debbie Downer about it, what the fuck I want to watch it for. And other people see it that way too. If 100%. you don't really care about it, then, then you're not going to get the view count. You're not going to get, you know, the, uh, the, the approval of it or whatever, but it's just you have to be excited about what you're doing. And I think Wes and them, that's one thing I've always said is that Wes is actually good for the game. He really cares about the sport and the racing and trying to build this and keep building better. And it's shown, you know, he's had multiple events. They had that huge event with all the uh, top fuel uh, and the funny cars. And now this pro mod event. And I'm sure there's probably been people that you've seen online or been in your ear telling you throughout the years that you can't pull that off or you can't make that happen. And now you're making it happen. So sooner or later, the same people that were talking shit about you 
are going to try to bandwagon on you and try to be a part of it as you, as you go as well. And you'll soon see that, or you may have already seen it now. Well, I mean, and it's, I'll tell everybody the same thing I tell this team is it's like, get on board or get run over. Cause sure. like the rest of these guys will quit way before I do. I haven't quit, won't quit. And there's, I, I mean, I, I dare people like, it's like, come on in, man. The water's warm. Like you'll quit way before I do For because sure. I don't give a shit about money. Like, I mean, and it's embarrassing to be honest. I don't do any of this for money. Like, of course we got to make a living. Of course we got to pay our bills, but like, I would do this for free. Like I I love this stuff. And I literally, I, it's not about, you know, I hear these promoters come up to me like, Oh, we're going to make so much money on this. I don't give a shit. As long as we can pay everybody and I can write that hundred thousand dollar check and everybody goes home safe. I'm cool. I just want to put on badass events, introduce more people to the sport of drag racing and, because I truly believe it's the great American motorsport. And I told you down there, you and your dad uh, in Bradenton, I said, I'll tell you guys what my dad told me. You can tell how good an insurance salesman is by how much coverage he has on himself. Because yep. if he has a bunch, he clearly believes in his product, right? I mean, and if I, I mean, I've got to have a lot of coverage. I've got to be that guy that if I'm not fired up, no one else is going to be fired up. And sometimes I'm over the top and I'm, you know, I'm real up and down. And that's where Mike comes in. <laughs> to try to balance me out typically, you know, yes, it's, the fun it's, job. No, it's a, it's a really cool thing, man. And I appreciate man, that rain is there. getting it. dude. Yeah, well, I'm about to come in my merch room. It'll Holy it shit. Down. That's a Florida uh, rainstorm. Good. If I ever heard. One. Yeah. It's, it's, I told you it's, it's either coming down hard. So I wanted to come in here. I can uh, hear you all a lot more and quiet, but yeah, that's how I look at things too. And you have to be no different for MPK. I mean, I tell people all the time, do I, do I make a good living of what I do? Of course, um, I, if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. But everything goes back into my race program. You don't, I mean, like this, I talked about last year. You know, I buy some small shit here and there for myself. I bought, you know, a set of wheels and a lift for my truck. But everything that I bring in goes right back into my program. Yes, I have a couple cars. Yes, I have multiple motors. I'm setting myself up. If I ever wanted to get out of this, I am good to where I could sell it. And I will be, you know, fine, but I don't plan on getting out of it. That's where I tell people, I plan on keep running, keep moving forward. It ain't about the money to me. Yes, money rules the world and it keeps things rolling. But as long as I can pay my bills and keep going with it, I'll continue to do it. The day that I don't have fun no more will be the day that I quit. Right now, I'm having a blast. We're getting ready to get geared up for MPK moving forward with that. So we'll see how that all uh, plays out. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the main main goal. Oh, special there's guest. the boss man right there. Special guest. Yeah. Pops I got to come in here and straighten some shit out because I'm oh, watching God. this shit driving down the road, Wes. Oh, yeah. Be all, careful. I might have blowed everything up, but I went 203. Now fucking yeah, 203. He wanted to correct that. He put that in the comments. Mm. I, 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 I can't take that from me. I still went 203. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll tell you another thing, too, about the grudge racing. Here's the thing what those guys need to do. And I'll tell you what makes it interesting, Wes. This is my opinion. If you race with a little bit of cabbage on the line, you got a little skin in the game, now everybody's interested. The driver is interested. They're on each other. They're ready to race. Their adrenaline is pumping. Why oh, you got the screen fucked up? I can't see who I'm talking to. They're good. Go ahead. So that's what makes it different. And here's the thing. I get it that they're not all grudge racers. And I'll tell you, I'm going to point out one guy. And me and this guy don't see eye to eye. I don't give him a reach around. I don't give a shit about him. But Stevie Jackson is one of the very best at it. And I'll tell you why. He'll put his money where his mouth is, and he will run for some chickens, win or lose. That's what makes it exciting. Those guys all have multi-million dollar operations. They fuck away $2,500 like it's nothing, $5,000. If they was to put some skin on the game, five grand, it makes a difference down there at the other end. When you got to hand those chickens over, you remember that shit. It ain't just a loss. You remember somebody dug in your ass. That's the difference. <laughs> That's what makes it exciting. I agree. And I honestly, I agree. And I actually thought about making it mandatory to have some sort of side bet. You know what I mean? Like making it mandatory to have some sort of side bet. But because I agree. I mean, it's like if you go to a horse track, that's why horse tracks are popular. You know, why people go to them. You can bet on the horses. You can bet two bucks. You can bet a hundred bucks, whatever the case may be. And we need more of that in our sport. And you're right. I remember we did a cover story on Stevie Jackson 
way back when he was racing the orange Mustang, right? Back at the beginning of killing time racing and all that. And he was on the come up in Orska and all this shit was happening. And he told me this story about grudge racing. And we were talking about comparing grudge racing to NHRA racing. Like you go lose in the final of an NHRA race. And yeah, you didn't get as many points as the other guy. And you, you didn't win the money, but it's a totally different deal when it's your money, you, whether it's 500 bucks or 50,000, it's a whole different experience when it's, 100%. it's not the promoter's money. It's not some outside person. It's yours or his. And that to me, I think that that's, we need more of that in our sport, not less. And, and here's what separates Justin from a lot of the drivers and he gets hated on for it. I, I sit back. I don't say nothing. Justin's pretty calm. Cool. He lets shit roll off his back all the time. He gets hated on quite a bit, but Justin likes to run for money. If he's going to make a pass, he'd rather make a pass for money against somebody in the other lane. Everybody says that's cocky. He's arrogant. He's, no, he's just, he just, he just wants to race and he wants to put some skin in the game because the race means more to him. If he runs somebody for money, same thing with Stevie. Like I said, I hate to keep Stevie gets jacked up enough by Donald Long, but at the end of the day, the guy does what he does, and he will run for some money, and he's good for the sport. He's good for the game. People don't like what he does, but at the end of the day, he is confident in his program. He is confident what he does, and he will put his money out there, and he will run for some chickens. And that's the difference, man. But I'll tell you, and, and, and you can even – even if you ask Stevie, racing someone for a grudge race for five or ten or twenty grand means more than winning a $100,000 after – you know, we had a marathon event. I promise you that one shot, one kill is the difference. We need more of it. I mean, we really do. And I know that like what, speaking of like going into the no prep Kings thing, uh, like, what do you guys, I mean, what is the, give me the lay of the land for 2024 when it comes to MPK, because it's, I know they started announcing races like really rapidly. There's some new tracks on there. You're coming back down to my neck of the woods. It's going to be cool to see MPK at uh, extreme raceway park. It's a badass little Saturday night drag trip. I'm sure that place will be absolutely bonkers. Seems more but like just, they're going to tracks like that this year. I like versus that. like the I Texas like Motorplex, they're going to XRP instead. So we'll, yeah. we'll see how that goes. There's I'm, a place for them all, but yeah. What, what's what's your thoughts, Justin? I've never been to XRP. Um, it's badass. That's going to be a cool deal experience. Like I said, they got a new track that's in, I believe, Missouri. Yep. Um, we're going to. So, uh, you know, that's going to be a cool deal. I like running MPK. I've ran it for the last couple of years. We're getting geared up. I mean, I, I I got set back a little bit with all the carnage at the Pro Mod race, but um, I already got it all ready to go. <laughs> I already got it all ready to go. My man told me I wasn't leaning on hard enough. I said, 10-4. Let's lean <laughs> on hard enough. 10-4. say that no more. So... <laughs> burn a tip on a spark plug that was some of the best cleanup. drone footage of a cleanup that no. we've ever had at world series for with that it was it was pretty epic pretty pretty good work yeah. by flow on that deal it was, it was pretty rough but i you know uh I've, I've licked my wounds and i've gotten everything back right shout out to noon and them for getting the motors and everything done um to be able to keep moving forward going into the mpk deal you know everybody knows it's it's a hard season um you know we got 15 events this year I'm hearing rumors that they're adding five to seven more. Just hasn't came out yet. Um, don't know if that's true or not. So don't take me 100%. It's just kind of rumors right now. But as of right now, there is a 15 race deal with the first six races being back to back for the first six weeks. So hmm. we have to. We haven't even fired the car up yet. Uh, hopefully, I get it fired up this weekend. I can get testing, get ready because April 20th is our first race, and then we're six weeks back to back. And then I believe. Uh, we are off for like two weeks and then we roll four weeks back to back. So it's a lot of racing. And that's where I kind of tell people, you know, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a tough schedule. You gotta, you gotta be committed to it. And I think that's one reason why I'm able to do what I do and, and be able to put stuff together to come run other events and all that, because it has taught me to, to be committed to it. Whenever, you know, Grenada motor and all that, and you gotta be ready the week after, it, it changes you. Or when we wreck the car, hopefully we never go down that road again. But we wrecked the car and we put the car back together in four days and made it to the next event. I mean, just stuff like that. But I do that because, like Wes said, it's not about the money. Yes, I get paid and yes, I, I make money to do what I do. But it's about the fans. And I was very straight up with that and I'm straight up with it now. There's people that actually save and spend their hard-earned money and their time to come see me. 
Come see Ryan Martin. Come see other uh, stuff. Step outside. Come, come see, come see, uh, come see Ryan Martin, Sean. They're like that. So that's why I try to, I try to make it. I try to make, do the best I can, unless it's just a hundred percent out of my hands. If I do that, then there's nothing I can do. But uh, for the most part, I, I try to do together. To, I try to put it together to be able to run the events, to be able to show out for my fans and the ones that support us. I think Just you see kidding. that a lot in MPK. I mean, uh, Paige Coughlin, she ran her car, was like completely duct taped the entire body <laughs> for like the last half of the year. You see guys <laughs> have some stuff happen, and if, if there's any way to make it to the next race, they're there. And I, I mean, it speaks exactly to what you're saying. And I think it, it shows something because there is some people that have just gave up or, you know, there were some people last year that didn't get picked for the team and they just quit it all in general. And I guarantee you now that we're going back to the individual deal, they ain't going to be able to just roll back through the gates and say, OK, here, I'm back again. It don't work like that. You got to be there for the good, the bad and everything in between. Yeah. And build I just your been, equity. Do you <clears throat> do you you consider yourself a professional drag racer, right? Uh, I say that loosely. The reason why is because there's a lot of people out there that's a lot better than me. I race. Well, I, I say it from more of a perspective of you earn your living drag racing, correct? Dude, how I, old are you? Well, I just turned 28. I was about to say 27. Well, how surreal is that to say that out loud? Like that's a conversation. Just so you know that I've been having a lot with a lot of people because if you if you really think about how many people are actually earning a living as a drag racer that list is short my friend and sure. how surreal i mean i mean even in the nhra like you can go down very the list few. of top fuel go down the There's list of probably, funny car yeah very that few. list is as thin as any yeah i mean it's point. so to be on that list like and to be someone that's earning your living you know doing what you love i'm just i mean like have you are, I know you're young and you, you've got so much left ahead of you and, and there's so much potential, but like, do you ever spend any time going, holy shit? Like, this is what I sat around as a kid racing with my pops dreaming of, right? Yeah. I, I actually, there, every now and then, um, I, I'll like, I'll have like a breakdown moment, I guess you want to say where I, I try to, to me personally, I, I feel like I am fucking so far behind. Not going to lie. I, even right now, I feel like I am. I should. Why be, you're successful? I should be ten steps ahead of where I am at right this second. So I think that continues to keep me driving to keep doing it. But if you really, I, I, it's weird how to. I guess it's weird how to explain it. But I feel like I'm so far behind. And then I talk to some of these people, and they're like, well, "I'm fucking 45, or I'm 50," and they're like, "They're there." But I also see people that are. I don't see nobody in the racing world, not going to lie, that right there. But, like, you see these TikTok stars. You see these YouTube stars. You see these younger celebrities that are 21, 22, 23. And there's sometimes where I think about, like, fuck, I wish I was that successful at that rate, too. So what I do is very successful. I'm not going to – I don't I don't knock that. But I wouldn't be able to do it without my fan base for what I do. And there's people that get on and they're like, well, you're doing too much. Well, the reason why I do it is because I'm just trying to grow different avenues and keep things rolling – and, and keep trying to come up with new stuff. I mean, there's one person that I literally, I'll probably never be this big, but it is a goal, and that is Cletus McFarlane. I think there's a lot of people that probably want to be like him. Him, Doug, Motion. I know I talk shit to them and everything, but they are taking over the racing industry and, and steadily moving forward. Now, you know, Motion's hooked up with Stevie. Another great. I talk shit to Stevie, and I make comments and everything, but I grew up watching him and i grew up you know doing that would i race against him tomorrow you're damn right i would I, hell i was trying to get a grudge race with him down there yes he was fucking a tenth fast for me at the time but anything could happen in a race and i was willing to put my money up to find out it is what it is. but you know i i respect what he does and i keep moving forward with it but and i i just you know i I've made this deal where it is, and I know a lot of people would go out there and like, oh, daddy's money or blah, blah, blah. None yeah, we just had someone say that in the comments. I was going to ask you about it. What what, no. what do you say to that when someone says that? This I've, I've lived with that my whole life. I'm not I'm not one of those people that's going to tell you that I came from fucking nothing. There's, I've never, I'll never say that because that's not true. I'm not one of those people that say I'm a street racer because that's not fucking true. I don't, I don't do that. What I what comes out of my mouth and what I talk about, I can stand on. 
Did I have a good living coming up? Yes. Were we rich? No, but I was comfortable. I was able to get what I want moving forward. I drag raced. My dad helped me out in the beginning of our, our, our my career. We drag raced. We had, you know, small blocks, Mustangs. We upgraded as we can. You know, coming uh, into being a part of the MPK and moving forward, it was uh, August of 2020. So I'm actually going on four years now with Swan Productions uh, as, a, as a company. But uh, August of 2020, I told my dad that I wanted to step back from the company and I wanted to take racing on full time. At that time, I had different social media platforms. I was able to start making a little bit of money. Um, you know, a couple grand here and there. It really wasn't that, but I said, I, I can build something. I can get sponsors. We can do it. If it fails, I know I have something to back on. Uh, even now I can still go back and work for the company if I, if I wanted to, but I was willing to try it and see what happened. And it's taken us to where we're at today. So I was very upfront with my dad. He's worked construction his whole life. You know, he's did that. I made it very clear to him. I don't want to do that. I don't want to work construction. I feel like there's other ways to make money. Yes, he's older. Maybe he doesn't know the different ways to do stuff because that's the only thing he's done his whole life. At the time, I was, you know, a couple years younger and I was like, you know, I want to try this and let's see what happens. And it's taken it to where it is now. You know, now, now we got multiple cars, multiple platforms, multiple engines. We got sponsors that come on board. Um, I take everything that I, I make as in, you know, from my social media, sponsorship, my merchandise, uh our of everything and i put it back into the race program to be able to keep pushing it forward um you know i i'm looking for maybe down the road probably trying to get to where i can start buying some rental properties and doing all that we haven't made it to that point yet but that's the ultimate goal is to be able to try to set myself up more for the future right now everything that i make goes right back into the program so it's not like i you know a lot of people see the stuff that we have and they think, you know, just filthy, filthy rich. And that's not the issue. I just take everything that I get in and I turn it around and put it back into the program. Or I try to make will and deals, stuff that I've learned throughout the years to be able to try to keep moving forward with the program. And I know there's some people on there be like, oh, well, your dad pays for it, does all that, blah, blah, blah. That shit don't bother me. I've heard that for my but, whole entire life. But listen, let me iterate on that. You know, I, I see that all the time. But just so everybody knows, man, I haven't paid for any of Justin's races since 2018. Not one cent. Nothing. He pays for everything. And I know he's never going to get the credit for it. Did he have help to get there? Yes. But what the help I gave him was nowhere near close to what he's grown it and made it to be now. Well, so, I mean, get that. <clears throat> Corey, don't I mean, I I'm 40. I have two kids like I want them to have it better than I had it. Like, am I a bad guy? Like so I, I work every day to yeah. make sure that Working my kids have a better life to make money than I do. Is not is not some easy path that no. people think that it is either. So it's got to start somewhere. No matter where or where we're at in life, or no matter what me and my wife own, it belongs to our boys. I don't give two fucks who don't like it. It's theirs. They don't even have to ask if they want something they can take. It's not a big deal. If I die tomorrow, my, everything I own, my boys will own. So at the end of the day, I, I, I'm not going to ask for forgiveness for anybody because I want better for my boys. Simple as that. Was I, did I grow up dirt poor? Was I grow up broke and didn't have shit? Yeah, I did. But what I did was I had a dad that kicked me in the ass and told me, get out and bust your ass and work hard to earn what you want. Nobody's going to give it to you. I can tell you both my sons, since the day they graduated out of high school, one graduated on a Wednesday, the other one graduated on Thursday. He went to work on Thursday. The other one went to work on Friday. They weren't going to go to college, so they're going to go to work. That's the way it is. They get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. They work 12-hour days, seven days a week, whatever we have to do. People don't realize it. And just like my dad told me a long time ago, he said, have you ever seen a grown man or woman throw shade on someone doing better than them? No. You're never going to see that. It's always the naysayers sitting back because they didn't do shit, but they had the same uh, 24 hours in a day. They just didn't do nothing with it. At the I end couldn't day, agree more. Dustin hustles. He grinds. He busts ass. He does what he's got to do to get what he's got. All that stuff out there, I ain't got shit to do with it. I just get to race it and blow the shit up, and it doesn't cost me no money. It's the best thing in the world for me. It's a win-win. Uh, oh, my God. I tell you I, what. I'm glad that, I'm glad that uh, – Big countries really came out of his shell. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, I am too. He's really. Well, you know, and really... what it is, I mean, that's a lot of comments in here too, but that's, 
people I think are, are maybe jealous. If they're jealous, it's because that's a, that's how a family should work, and that's how that's yeah. how parents should view their children. I I say a lot of times I feel like when you have when you have kids, in a lot of ways, your life ends. You're you're now living for them, and in your deal, you know you continue to support and live them, but it's about it's about their life now, and it's about what their potential. And I think that a lot of people see it as a as a money thing or or whatever. That's really how a good family or father son relationship should work. Especially, I agree. I mean, sure. we see that a lot in raising. Are you at all? I ain't surprised? taking my headphones off again. You got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> hey, I have to say one more thing. Oh, he's well, back again. One hear. more thing. He also. They can't he, hear you. Can't I hear them no more. He also employs two grown men through his MBA. He employs. How many guys out there are doing that? I can tell you, there's not very many few that are actually doing drag racing for a living and employing people. One of them happens to be C.B. Jackson. How many other ones are out there doing that? Let's be for real. How many can do that? Not many. He's one of them. Not many. And I think about it all the time. Like, Justin, I like that's why we're Absolutely. talking to you is because I think what you're doing is great. And I, for me, it's inspiring. And we need to do our level best to make sure that people recognize that it's possible. Right. Like I, the reason I think it's important to talk about is because I'm sure there's somebody watching this show right now going, man, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm never going to mm -hmm. be able to race at the level I want to race at or blah, blah, blah and all of that. And it's like, no, you need to be reminded that you don't have to be born into elite level wealth. You don't have to have parents that had a billion dollar exit of their business. You don't have to have that. What you have to have is the drive and the determination to pursue it. And I mean, people ask me all the time, like, you know, what do you think? You know, what's the secret to success in business? Don't quit. That's what I tell people yeah. all the time. Like I tell my kids that don't quit. That's the secret. The secret is don't quit. Over the 20 years that we've been doing Drag Illustrated, I've had 10,000 really good opportunities to quit. 10,000, maybe a million. I mean, lawsuits, fires, fights, disasters, economic crisis. I mean, every reason under the sun to quit. And we just didn't, you know, and maybe we're just too dumb to stop. But I, I think that that's the real that that's the truth. I mean, if you want to accomplish anything and you're living proof, don't quit. How many times would it have made more sense to just go back to work for dad? It, it, you lot. know what I mean? I mean, I there, there's times. Hell, there's times that I thought about just selling my whole operation and, and going to get, um, you know, just some slower, smaller counter cars. And just playing around with those. But I, I I enjoy what I do and I like what I'm doing. So I'll continue to keep doing what I'm doing to be able to keep racing and keep running the stuff I, I want to run. Um, I never thought, you know, I would have an MPK car, a pro mod, a backup MPK car. Um, I just put down, you know, a down payment to be able to get a new motor from Noonan. Um, I mean, like I said, so that's where. You know, people that are watching this and some think, well, it comes so easy. It doesn't come easy. It's It's been a long process. You know, uh, I've been racing since I was 15 years old. I started Swan Productions in two, uh, August of 2020. I can remember sitting in my bedroom and coming up with a, a logo. And that's the SG logo you see nowadays. It's still the same logo that I drew on a piece of paper. And it hangs up on my wall in my bedroom. And I remember when I when I started this in August of 2020 and, you know, sponsorships, I tell people all the time, I get so many people that reach out to me and they're like, hey, how do I secure this with this person? And I try to give them insight. I'm not saying it's going to work for them, but I just try to give them what what I do. But or, you know, you get people that hit me up. And I tell you, this is probably one of the worst ways to go about sponsorship. I And I've, I've done this and that's how I've learned is everybody's always about how much money can you give me? It's never what can I do for them to be able to receive that money or receive the parts or that. And that's why a lot of sponsorships fall out and they don't go through is because one, people are doing it only for the money Two, you know, they, they don't want to, they don't want to have a two way street. And I tell people all the time, there's a sponsor that I let go earlier this year. And I just told him it was a one way street with him. And, you know, he wanted me to change my outlook of it and how I was doing stuff on the Internet and keep moving forward. And I just told him, I said, hey, man, listen, I'll just go ahead and give you your check back and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because it's still going to continue to grow. Yes, I'll hurt a little bit because it was a pretty hefty fund. I go, but I'm not going to change the way I act and the way I do stuff to be able to try to get 
any kind of big check or money from it. So that's the that's the good thing about it. I mean, I remember when I started, dude, I was I was putting logos on the car for free. Like people were doing it. And I, that's just because I was doing it. Then I start putting them on there for five hundred dollars. And I'll tell people right now because I am very open with my fan base. I tell them how much I spend. I tell them how much I make. You cannot get on one of my cars. And this is not an ignorant comment or anything. You cannot get on one of my cars for less than fifteen thousand dollars now. That's, That's the smart. start. Yeah. That is the starting package. And we move up from there. And there's people that are like, oh, there's no way anybody will do that. Or you're asking for too much. Well, no, it just costs a lot to run this operation and be a part of it. And I don't like a car that has a bunch of logos on it. So <laughs> it's just part of it. So I, trust me, if my Camaro that's out there and I'll show you all whenever we get done, I'll, I'll give you a little tour around the shop. It's a little messy right now, but I'll give you a tour around the shop. And uh, but I wish I could just run it without the logos. But I can't do this without the sponsors. So, yes, they got to be on the car. And I'm happy to do that. And I, I try to make up for it by doing the social media, and keep growing and giving them the numbers and showing them my algorithm and trying to give them you know, uh, uh, an avenue to be able to make money off of their sponsorship because that keeps bringing them back. And that's one thing I can say is I have a very, very successful rate of having sponsors come back for multiple years. And that's the good thing about it. It's because I don't sit there the first, I, I can tell you the, the first mistake someone makes for getting sponsorship is talking about money right off rip. That's the first thing. I don't even talk about money at all. We go ahead and figure out, hey, where are you at? What you got going on? What's your business about? Let's see where you want to be at on the car. Once we establish everything, then we're going to go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty on money. And there's times that I've, you know, I've caved in and been like, you know what? I'll do it for that. Let's go ahead and establish a relationship. Maybe it works out. Maybe it don't. For the most part, it's worked out for me. And the following year, they either double it, triple it. They see what I can bring to the table. But one thing I won't do is I won't do shit for free. And I've, I've came to that now. I mean, I had a company, you know, a pretty, pretty big company, not going to lie. And, and they're part of NHRA. And they reached out and they were like, you know, if you do this, this and this, and we see these kind of numbers, then we'll talk about cutting you a check. I said, what happens when that happens? Because I know I'm going to bring those numbers. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. What happens when you tell me, hey, just fuck off. You already got your numbers. I said, so I know what I can bring to the table. And that's the good thing about it is you got to know what your worth is. I mean, I'm sure Wes, everybody in here, they know what their worth is. They know what they bring to the table. And people can choose to work with them or they, they don't have to. That's and it doesn't have to be it. like I try to tell people, it's, it doesn't have to be bad blood, right? Yes, you know what I mean? Like we can no, still all stay friends. We can all still hang out and laugh and cut up or whatever. But like if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. You Justin, know? And it's, Justin and I talked about it at, at the pro race. Remember that, Justin? And and you you told me about that company. And I said, man, I wouldn't change anything. You know, like. Agree. I mean, but, but that's but because that, that's why people follow Justin is, you know, that he is real. He'll say what he what he feels, you know, there isn't much of a filter. I mean, that's, that's why people, that's why you attract these fans, you know, cause they like, they like the way you, the way you are, you know? So if you get somebody and you get, and you were to uh, change and become more corporate, you know, then, then, then you're, I, you're kind I of think a sellout. It would, those yeah, guys, it, would, right? it would be, it would be a, it would be a sellout mode. And, yeah, yeah. and I'm just, I, I'm doing good what I'm doing now. Um, moving forward. You know, I came I came down there to the top fuel event y'all had down there in the funny car. And I did. I looked at the one company, uh, the lawnmower company, the Skag. Skag. Yep. I looked at that and I was like, you know what? That would be fucking amazing to be able to have something that's part of that. But then on the other end of it, this is how I think. I'm not saying this is how this is. But on the other end of it, I was thinking maybe that company won't work with me because of the way that I talk or the way that I act or the way that I cuss or – doing the only fans or stuff like that. And I'm not saying that has anything, but it's just, it's just a, a deal for me. So I sat there and I sat back and I was like, should I change what I got going on and what I'm doing to be able to reach a goal like that? Or do I continue to keep doing what I'm doing and just take longer? I can tell you right now, if like, if I, if you secured a sponsorship like that, you'd be fucking five or seven years ahead. Not going to lie. Just because yeah. the amount of money of something that could bring, but there's other stuff that comes with that amount of money, a sponsorship and all that. So there is times that I think about certain things like that. And I also, you know, uh, I, I kind of linked up with some people that, you know, are higher up than I am, as in, you know, dealing with uh, higher end sponsors and that. 
And they kind of told me that, you know, it, I shouldn't think like that because people want people that are authentic and they want the real person. If you start acting fake or start doing that, it never works out. There's so a partner for everybody, you know, like, sure. like there, there's a company out there that likes what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. maybe that company doesn't it, you know, and I'm not calling any about, yeah. any company, but, but, but there's a company that probably likes what you're doing. And, and would you have those numbers if you weren't acting the way you do? Yeah. yeah it's what no, I agree. The table. So why change it once you're at that table trying to come to a deal with them? So it, yeah, and it's, so, it's that outside influence. Yeah. It, it's it, it's a thing. You have to really you have to pay attention to it, right? Because it's like all of a sudden you do you start to alter how you behave and you start to second guess all these things because yep. well, what if it pisses them off or whatever? Yeah, and it, it's uh, it, that's a very difficult environment to succeed in. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Where you've got to be driving the bus. You got to have people that truly believe in you, not just say they believe in you, but like put their money where their mouth is. And, you know, I'm, and I have a lot of partnerships that are more hands on than others. You know, some people are really detail oriented and they want to be involved every step of the way. And then you have other people that believe in what you're doing, see the value in what you're doing and want to support it and want to be involved with it and want to benefit from it and everywhere in between. But you you really you've got to be the one with your hands on the wheel. You know, like that's that's the important part is it's it's you that has people excited. It's you that people are following and right, wrong or indifferent. Like I've said it publicly, like some of the some of those videos early on, I'm like, homeboy is wilding out. Like I can't <laughs> I can't keep up with some of this, you know, like some of the cab of the truck stuff. And it, it was I loved it. I mean, but it was like, that's not for me, you know. And, and like, I and I understand that. And there's some people and I tell people all the time is that. Like the good thing about it is, is I'm, I, I have such a variety. You may not yeah. like that one video, but there's 10 other videos that you may be like, okay, this is part of what I like doing. Dude, talking it's, to your fans in the shop. It's okay. It is just so say, I don't want to look at it. It's yeah, so, so good. It's so good. You know? And, it, and I, I mean, so yeah, I mean, it's, and I, I take the good with the bad is I'm going, Hey, look, there's a whole lot more positive here than negative. Sure. Um, and you guys are engaging people. That's what I think our sport lacks is that we need to keep this conversation going. Like it's easy to be excited Friday and Saturday and Sunday at the racetrack. We're fucking doing burnouts, having a big time. It's exciting, but it's, it's where we lose ground is Monday through Thursday where it's yep. like, everybody goes back to their normal lives. They're back to talking about football and basketball and everything else. How do we make sure that drag racing becomes part of that conversation? That's, that's an important thing. Like that's why we do this show. That's why we've, constantly encourage people to do shows and do their own podcast and do interviews because we need to stay in the, in the eye of the public through the week. You know, yeah, I mean, it's if, really, if it, really important. It's no different. It's no different than the algorithms. If you, if I was to stop posting for two weeks, my view count and everything would just tank. It would go, it would go through the floor. That's just part of it. And that's the reason why I have to stay up on it. I try to keep a schedule. I got, you know, whiteboards all around the shop. I, I keep notes. I keep moving forward to keep learning on, on what I'm doing to, to be able to keep being successful and keep moving forward. You know, I'd love to have a million subscribers tomorrow, but I know. And one thing I've learned is the faster you grow, the faster you can fall immediately too. So yeah. I do like the slow, continuous growing deal. If I see a point, okay, it's getting a little slow. Let's see if we could switch things up a little bit to try to be able to, uh, you know, shock it and keep moving forward. It's good. And it's it's worked out for what it is right now. And there's some people that, that don't like what I say. There's some people that don't like certain videos of what I got going on, but they love other stuff. Okay, just don't watch that. Come watch this. Or the biggest thing I get is, you know, I have so many people that come up to me and they're like, I hated you in the first season of Street Outlaws but I love you now. I'm glad you changed. And I literally tell, and I tell everybody this, I didn't change one fucking right. bit. You <laughs> just, just the way you viewed me change. I said, Char that's just part of arc. That's what makes I good said, TV so, too, man. Yeah. And, so, and that's where it comes back. If people are fake, like yeah. if you're fake and you're fake for TV, people will look right through you. They'll see that shit. You have to be authentic and be real. If you know, that's why I think Stevie Jackson is one of the best out there. You know, he can, some people may say he's cocky and arrogant and talk shit, but he's real. That's just, that's who he's, that's, that's who, who he is. is. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, th I want to see more of it. Not less. I, I mean, we had a driver's meeting at the world series and I, I tried to tell all you guys like lean in, don't resist this. You're the baddest sons of bitches in the world. You're the best there is. 
act yep. like it. Walk around with a with some pep in your step. Yep. Right? You guys are superstars, certified badasses. Like believe it, own it. And I love when I see people doing it. I'm curious how much how much content at this point in time are you creating? Like you mentioned all these different platforms, like, uh, cause that's one of the things you mentioned Cletus. It's yeah. like people, I, I mean, I think there are tons of us that are like, Oh my God, I wish I was doing what that guy is. But what they don't see is living and dying by an upload schedule and constantly creating content and having a camera stuck in your face at all times, even days you don't feel good. You don't look good. You don't want to be on camera. You don't want to talk. You still got to do it. Like, the, the grind of content creation is a real thing. It's not digging ditches. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's, it's not an easy task. What, what is the content creation? You know, how much content are you guys creating right now? And, and what's the rollout and planning of that look like? So right now I'm a little slow. I'm not going to lie. Uh, God damn, y'all fuck me up every time you go to myself. I feel like I'm talking in a mirror. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, ain't it? I I mean, I'd, rather just, I'd rather just talk to y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Leave him movie. alone, JT. Okay, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, right now, I'm a little slow on getting content out just because I have so much shit going on. And this is where I've said, I think this year, I literally have sat back and realized that this deal is bigger than me. I am a type of person where I have to have my hands on every single thing and doing that. And I've had to learn that I got to let other people do stuff to be able to keep growing and doing better. Um, so, you know, before then, so right now I'm, I'm in the process of trying to hire a videographer and an editor that's going to help me out tremendously because it's hard. Like right now I do everything. I shoot all the content. I stay up late at night. I do all the editing videos. I schedule my post out throughout the week as for scheduling posts. Um, I'll, let's just take December of last year because that's when I kind of slowed down. So December, last year in December, I get three reels out a day across all platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So three reels across all platforms every day. I get one three minute video out on Facebook and Instagram. I was trying to get two YouTube videos out a week. Plus I then started doing a podcast. I love doing my podcast. It's fucking amazing. I built a podcast room, but it's just gotten to the point where I can't keep up with the editing side of it. I have plenty of content. I got fucking days of it. If I could just find an editor that I'm and I'm willing to pay good money to just keep, keep up with edits, then we would be be good. We got, we got, we got a guy <laughs> for you right here. Bam. So so that's where that's my next get him off move. the screen. That's ours. Don't don't mess with our guy. <laughs> that's my next move is is trying to find uh an uh, an editor another thing i got coming out this year and i've been you know kind of playing with it here in the shop is we're doing our own live stream um we're going to do streaming this year um i know you know some of the events that we're going to i've already kind of got a little bit of backlash talking about you know you're not going to be able to do it because certain people are there i tell them fucking hold my nuts and you have to come let me know that <laughs> i'm not able to fucking live stream so uh my car is going to be there my deal my i'm there racing i guarantee you i'm gonna film myself so uh but uh that's another deal that we're coming on so i think i finally I've, I've i've broken it down to a few people that i'm looking in to be able to get the editing side of it um if i had somebody that you know could just full-time edit and that's the only thing they're going to be doing for me is editing then i'll be good and keep trying to move forward and you have to do that and that's one thing i give garrett uh, you know, Garrett has a, a whole team over there, dude. He's got, you know, merchandise, uh, you know, all his editing, his filming, everything. One thing I can say that that I feel that Garrett has going for him is he owns the Freedom Factory. He's right across the street from Bradenton Motorsports Park. So he's able to go out, film, do whatever he wants. He don't have to drop that content for a month and a half, two months. He probably has, and I'm not saying he does, but if I, you know, if I'm thinking about it rightly, he probably has 10, 15 videos on standby, you know, whatever he's got going on. In my world with MPK, I I feel like when I first started MPK, I was probably the only one that was really posting social media and promoting it and pushing it. Now everybody is. So in MPK, I got 43 other drivers that's doing the same shit that I'm doing. And then you have eight to 15 live streams or in the stands. So by the time you make it back to your pits, your pass is already online on Facebook. It's already online on yeah. YouTube. So it makes it harder. Um, and I do feel I'm not taking nothing away from Gary. He's busted his ass and he's, he's fucking taking everything over. I'm not going to lie. He's buying up a lot of shit. They got 
a lot of great content and I do watch his channel religiously to just, you know, I try to keep up with what he's got going on. There's only a few people that I watch on YouTube, but I do say, I feel like he does have a little upper hand there because he's able to do the content and edit it and drop it whenever he wants. And there's no competition. That's, That's one true. thing I can say. Now, when he does his little, you know, burnout deals and his, uh, his Christmas tree race, Yes, he has, you know, somewhat competition. Other people are filming the same day he's there. But nowadays you go to some of these events where I don't think it's in PDRA or like Pro Mod. You know, those drivers out there aren't vlogging. They're not, no. you know, they're not yeah. doing that. So I think somebody that was able to come over in that side of the field and start doing it, I think they would kill it. I think they would, you know, do tremendously well and, and, and doing that because there's nobody doing that. When there's a lot of competition, uh, it's soon or later get watered down. And that's the reason why I try to do different shit. I try to do different avenues because and people are like, oh, he's all around the place. It's not that I'm all around the place. It's because I'm trying to do different stuff, because if you see 44 drivers doing the same shit, it's just watered down. There's no point. In yeah, it. agreed. I mean, and Clay Milliken in NHRA is probably For the sure. best. Like, and it's really impacted his career and it's impacted his status because like people Dude. have gotten to know him. They're they're watching him. It's Lee it's a big, big really deal over there. And, too. and, and, and both and, of those started from outside. They had to kind yeah. of lean on that initially, yeah. work their way up. I mean, Clay comes from a you know variety of different racing disciplines, and he's kind of brought that. Leah kind of had to do that as part of her deal to get noticed and get to where she is now. So really Antron, I think also does a good job, but really, I yeah. mean, we're, we're starting to nail it, you know, whittle it down, but the, you know, uh, outlaw, outlaw door slammers, grassroots racers, that kind of stuff. They do a, a lot better job than the higher you get in the professional ranks. It seems like they do it less and less. So it's yeah. kind of exactly what you're saying, but Hey, Take us around the, uh, you know, around yeah, the shop. Take us right around now. the shop. Let's real see quick. what's going on. Uh, let's tell see us what you got going on. <laughs> if it's not MPK season. Oh, People I can't love tell to the see weather, this. Uh, I don't know if I could turn the. Can we turn the camera around on this or not? Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. So. Let's see. Nah, I guess you can't turn it around. So, uh, anyway, the shop is dirty right now. So, when I first started out, um, I was in, you know, a little garage up in the front of the house. And then I moved over and I built this side of the uh, shop here in the back, which was a 50 by 48. So my merch trailer just got here. Um, it's, it's all getting ready for MPK. So everything's kind of crowded up, but anyway, where'd you get that merch here. trailer? Yeah. Let's see that merch yeah. trailer. Dude, I bought it. I got to See, that's why I tell people all the time. Even if motherfuckers might think I'm rich, dude, I bought this trailer for $4,000. So let's go inside here. I'll quick. give you a six for it. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. I got just because I got a good deal. Don't mean I can oh, give okay. you a good deal. So Dude, that thing's uh, nice. So I just yeah, that's got all this right built. There. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. So I just got all this built. Got everything. We're starting to get everything set up ready. We got to put AC in it. Get a bed up there. So the merch trailer is uh, getting done. But uh, let's come over to this side. I'm just gonna hold the phone like this. It'll be you're easy. good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had this side of the shop. I built uh, the merch room, which I was doing all my own merchandise. This, I just decided this year that the merch is past me. So now I have a fulfillment company that handles all my merchandise. Um, I can't keep up with the orders, what we got going on. Uh, this is the podcast room that I had built to be able to do a podcast. It's Man, awesome. he's got everything we need. Merch trailer, podcast room. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just head down that. to head down to Florida. Hang um, out. I just I just paid at the beginning of the year. So this where this wall ends right here is where the shop ended, and I needed more space, so I extended it out. Um, so now I have 50 by 84 foot. Uh, we have prenup, which most people know me for that car and MPK. Um, it's on 275s right now. It will be a backup car for MPK. We have Blood Money, which is the pro mod that we ran down there with y'all. Uh, we did pull the motor and stuff out of it because that's the one that we slung the rods out. So whenever we get ready to uh, give pro mod another chance, we'll go ahead and do that. But and then we got the new MPK car. Uh, we're getting everything suited up, ready to go. Um, it's a wizard built race car, just at Modern Racing. He does all my wiring and plumbing, so he got that all done. Uh, very, very nice piece. Um, I will say this. Wes, I feel like I am the first car that has flashers. Wait, what? 
Has what? <clears throat> oh, has has hazards on oh. the back of the car. Are you serious? Are you going to do a ricer flyby whenever you beat? So are people? they on right now? Yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. When I, if yeah. I bust your ass at the racetrack, you're turning the all you got to do flashers. is look over the other lane. You're going to see the flashers on. So all right. I'm here for me, it. Are they on right now? <laughs> so I'm here I did for some, it. I did some different stuff with this car. So there's uh there's there's hazards, flashes on the back. Uh the other thing that's pretty cool, Austin, hit the trans brake and uh go full throttle. See if it turns on. It should. Trans brake and go full throttle. See how it turns oh. the strobe. <laughs> so that's awesome. At, at nighttime, right now it's in the air. When it's on the ground. At nighttime, it'll it'll uh, basically strobe off the racetrack. Um, just try to do something to make it more exciting for the fans. I can guarantee you right now, there's probably a fan out there that doesn't give a fuck how fast the car's running or what it's doing. But when they see those strobe lights, whenever I get on the trans brake, I guarantee they're going to tell their friends, "Look at the fucking red lights that are underneath that race car." So it's part of. Hey man, do, are you sure you don't have like a background in Honda Preludes? <laughs> Or uh, well, is that also is that <laughs> have, you, have you recently climbed out of an Acura Integra? Yeah. But well, well, so I'm a big I'm a big Fast and the Furious fan. I, I know a lot too, of people right? talk a lot of people talk shit about Fast and the Furious in the series, but I guarantee you, if they weren't making money, they would not continue to make movies. So <laughs> people are to talk shit all they want, but they do it. I can tell you right now, I've drag raced, I've ran nitrous motors. Yes, do I know you're not supposed to say NOS? Do I know that's not how the nitrous goes through JT the motor on the it. movie? JT still says NOS. NOS, baby. <laughs> dude, that's just, that's just part of it. It makes it exciting. So I try to come up with ways to be able to make it exciting for the fans. I guarantee. That's why, like, I let all the kids come sit in the car at the event. Even brand new car, I've, ever, I've already told my fan base, if you come to an MPK event and you, are, you have a kid, bring them over. We'll sit them inside the car. Well, now... The kids are going to be able to hit the trans brake. I was trying to do something that would be able to get them more involved with it. We used to be able to hit the trans brake. It makes a little, it makes a little sound. That ain't no fun. Now I'm going to get the kids to hit the trans brake and smack the throttle, and you'll get to see all the lights light up for them. So it ain't. That's it ain't actually for me. awesome, That's cool, Justin. That's yeah, awesome. It ain't, it ain't. It ain't for me. It's. It's just to be able to get more people interacted in the sport and keep growing and keep moving together. But. So we're we're going ahead. We're fixing that deal. Uh, we'll go ahead and show y'all a little bit of the parts area. So, you know, I started out. I didn't have none of this. Um, I kind of grew it up. Then I had, you know, one transmission, one motor. So we got a transmission that's in the car. We got spares. We got a spare blower. Uh, we got wheels. We'll come over here to our little parts area. I got two guys that work for me. This is Austin. This is Jesse. Uh, they are full time. They work for me. We got. Everything for the cars that we have, prenup, Sir Vincent, that's the car you don't see right now. It is identical to the first Lexus, but it is a 2022 model instead of it being a 2015 model. So that car, that paint body right now, it will be back here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll have that here. But we got prenup, we got Sir Vincent, we got blood money, and we got bad blood. And then we got this motor It's in the car. I have this spare motor. Uh, I just ordered a fourth engine and the third engine was the one we slung the rods out. It's getting fixed at noon. And right now got a couple screw blowers. So I'm pretty invested into what yeah, I got going clearly. on. Clearly. Clearly. I tell brother. people all the time. I mean, I live a good life and I have fun, yeah. but I'm broke as shit. Not gonna <laughs> lie. What can we expect as far as changes to your combination, you know, outside of the car itself being a brand new car, but just, mm -hmm. you know, to pick up a couple numbers here and there, what are you looking for this year? Well, one, I've always wanted to build a 1969 Camaro, but one thing I will say over in our, our series, if you have a car that's older than 1979, you get to take a weight, a weight break. So, uh, I, the reason why I built the Lexus is because it was kind of, nobody had it over there and I wanted to be a little bit different, but now, you know, everybody's fast over there and you're always trying to find that extra number. So finding that extra number, I said, okay, let's. To go ahead and take advantage of the rules and because i want to build a 1969 let me go ahead and build one i get to take an extra 25 pounds off uh just from the other cars in the class just because i have a car that's before 1979 year um i've also learned a lot me and my dad have learned a lot with the lexus we built that car three years ago we have put all the updates and everything into this new car and 
hopefully it performs. I know the Lexus is fast. It's been fast. If something was to happen or we weren't able to get this car ready in time, we would be able to swap back over to the Lexus and start running MPK. But I think we're going to be fine. I got a lot of great people behind me. Uh, that's one thing I've, I've always tried to do is try to build relationships. Shout out to Justin at Modern Racing. Um, you know, he helps me out tremendously. Our sponsors moving forward, Type A Motorsports, Marty Robertson. Um, you know, he helps me out. Tree Mart, Hormone Logics with Todd. So we have a lot of great sponsors to keep moving forward with this. But we'll just see how, how it performs and how it goes. But I think we'll be all right. So when Looks is good, the first man. race, brother? We, like, we'll, we'll, I just wonder, when are you heading out? You're going to be trying to get the car started this weekend, be testing uh, immediately after that, yep. and then when is the first race? April 20th is the first race, and we're in Pennsylvania. So we got Headed Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania, and then I think it's Virginia, and then it's New York, and then it's New Hampshire, Kentucky, and then Minnesota. I like so it, that, man. That's the first full deal. So we'll see how it all plays out. My goodness, man. Well, hey, Elon, meet your new hero. Justin, uh, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. Tell your dad hello. Yeah. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll let you get back to work. If you need anything, you let us know. You know where to find us, brother. Thank you, Justin. Right. Sounds good. See you all later, guys. Appreciate it, man. See you, buddy. Holy moly, man. What a deal. That was like that, I love the co-host format. Um, and that Elon, we're going to, we're going to start doing more of that wherever we we start the show, like very quickly bring on just like a guest host. So we can talk about a sure. lot of different things and not just have it be like a standalone interview. So holy moly, man, what's, uh, what's going on, Mr. Uh, Drag Racing Bracket Bonanza. You've got to be blown away <sighs> that this thing has taken off like it has. I, like, it, I mean, it, people are talking about it, Elon. I mean, it's happening. Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. And I was just cracking up. Uh, about Justin, about being invested, and I'm broke as hell too. I mean, I'm. <laughs> I mean, Drag Race Bracket Bonanza right now is is going gangbusters. It's your promo. It is. It's yeah. my promo. Someone work, asked hate me money. how much money have I spent on. It, I go, man, I could have a kick ass super comp team right now, like a <laughs> toter home trailer oh, backup. Man. You know, I could hire Sean the, Langan to run it for me. Such is the I mean, entrepreneurial journey, man. Yeah, it's, uh, but, but, yeah, but you've got to be proud of how far this thing has come in such a short amount of time. So it's so insane that when you give people what they want, even if you don't know they want it, they will embrace it. And then if you take care of them and treat them right, they will just continue. I mean, it's a slow process. But the biggest thing we ask fans over the off season is how can we make Drag Race Rack of Bonanza better? And like the most tallied response was, man, we'd like to be able to have our own leagues. And I was like, OK, so we went to work um, and figured out, you know, Aiden Lampkin from Lampkin Software Solutions figured out how to do that. And we opened up league play right before the Gator Nationals. We have almost 160 different leagues right now. Drag Illustrate League is one of those. And and yeah. the rest of the DI I staff's mean, pretty, you know, they're not loving the league format so far because I I think me and Wes are running away from everybody. Yeah. Crushing and them. It's, it's, a, it's a learning process because the biggest thing I'll tell people is you have to fill out your basically your drag race bracket up and ends the universe bracket. Mm -hmm. But then if you're in a league, you just have to apply that bracket. There's a drop down and you can either apply that bracket or make a new bracket. I think part so of my success have, was that I was the first one to figure that out. For yes. some of our audience, I had, like I had to real educate quick. Alicia on that. She was like, I didn't even Wes's yeah. wife is like, I didn't even fill out a bracket in the league. I'm like, oh, you got to make one in the main league and copy it over. It's pretty well, simple. What it's you, for what the you people that maybe it. don't understand what's going on. I apologize for not giving Elon the introduction he deserves. My paths our paths crossed. Oh, my gosh. 10, 12 years ago, something like that. Oh, more than likely. Yeah. Um, maybe longer. Probably, yeah, at uh, least that. Yeah, at least that. Elon is one of the best known public relations experts in the drag racing community. And he ultimately spun off, uh, worked for John Force forever. That's when I first met him, went out on his own, watched Warner Communications, who is, you know, another business that's thriving. He helps us here at Drag Illustrated, supports any event, uh, live event endeavors that we have. And in uh, 2023, launched Drag Racing Bracket Bonanza, a passion project that he wanted to bring traditional bracket play like you see right now. Like I was going to ask yeah. you, one of my questions is what are you seeing in March Madness that you want to ultimately apply to bracket bonanza? But anyways, it last year 
to too much to rave reviews. Elon introduced Drag Racing Bracket Bonanza. You can check it out um, at DragRaceBracketBonanza.com. Free to play. You basically sign in, create an account, and then every week you're notified that in HRA Gator Nationals, brackets are now open. Once the field is set on Saturday night, you're granted an opportunity to go build out your bracket. And it's to me, it goes back to the horse racing analogy that I was using with Justin Swanstrom just a few minutes ago. But it's it's a it's a way for fans to have skin in the game. Like exactly. it's it's a oh, way yeah. for fans to be invested. Now, sure. I mean, and I thought it was really really cool uh, platform in its initial format to roll it into 2024 and introduce league play. I mean, for me as a, as a business owner, I love the camaraderie and the team building yep. aspect of it because I would encourage anybody on here. If you're in drag racing and you own a business or you have a small operation and you've got some people that even have a passing interest, get start a league because you can get everybody talking about these yep. things. You'd be blown away the way it impacts your conversations from week to week, because, you know, instead of maybe having one conversation about the race that lasts a few minutes, all of a sudden you're saying, man, my bracket got destroyed in the first round. I had all these upsets and all these picks, or I swept pro stock motorcycle. And all of a sudden you find yourself talking about gauge Herrera or talking about, you know, buddy hole or somebody clay Milliken breaking your bracket. Like, it just, it's such a good thing for our sport. So it's there's the a little bit of an introduction that March Madness brackets have had for decades. And then fantasy sports, now sports betting on the apps as that becomes legalized in more and more states, that that skin in the game, it really changes things. And and like you said, the league play to me, when you've got, I don't know how many how many users you have now, Elon, but thousands. We are over instead of seeing 2,500 yourself, users. Okay, so instead of seeing Players. yourself somewhere on that leaderboard, you know, of thousands of people, you narrow it down to your your dozen coworkers and see how you stack up against them. And that's made it a lot more fun for our group. Yeah. And I think, you know, my goal is I want to make this so easy for people to, like you said, just introduce them. We added stats. We added photos. It will always be free. It will always be kid-friendly. I mean, Cam McMillan is playing. And he is like super stoked. I think he's like third in pro stock right now. So he's like living and dying with Phoenix. You know, he's like, he's actively already like Corey sent me a text. Awesome. Cam is third. He can't wait for Phoenix. I mean, I'm this is overall this right is now. You now. Like you said, skin in the game. You want to know yeah, you're going to follow qualifying now because it's the completion of the winter nationals. Yeah. And I, I was going to ask you, how, carryover how are we, how are we handling that? Like the, oh, with the so completion of the, the Winter Nationals, to, how is that going to happen? When we start a bracket, like let's say a bracket's open on Saturday night, we set an end time for Sunday at 11 o'clock Pacific. Well, obviously, NHRA changed the schedule, so we just adjust that back. And then I physically lock it. But if the race isn't completed, we can just leave that window of that event open with the bracket still locked. And as long as it doesn't overlap into the next event – so basically, it's just like its own entity. And then the race will conclude on Saturday, bam, and then we'll just open the next one up Saturday night. Gotcha. So we built that functionality in. The trickiest thing we're dealing with is just the timing of our events. We have a small window for people to fill out brackets. So if a race runs a little bit long on Saturday or some kind of adjustment, they start a little bit earlier. On West Coast, it's fine. Because that, you know, we had people could still fill out your bracket on the East Coast until one o'clock in the afternoon. It's when it's the reverse, it's tricky because you're tightening the window. We have a lot of people on the West Coast. Do you, whenever um, people sign up, do you, do you get their, their phone number? Yeah. So we, cause yes, cause we can do text notifications now. I was going to so say, like, I think reason. that that's the play is SMS notifications. Yeah. Yeah. So we get, you get a, now you can get, um, if you sign up, you provide your email address and phone number if you want. There's It's not mandatory, um, but you can opt in for email. So now you get a Friday around 2 o'clock. You get an email that's called Denzi's Deets. The great Dave Densmore provides us some insight, but it's all stats. And that document will get uglier and uglier as the season goes on because I'm just going to cram numbers into it. And my design people are like, this is the worst looking document ever. And I go, you haven't seen anything yet. Because it has top 10 in points. It has winter national results. It has Phoenix results. We now have the ability. We can, we're can. we telling you the 
top three reaction times by drivers by class. We're telling you the quickest ETs. We're telling you the fastest speeds from the previous event to give you all this data to help you make a better choice. Because that's like the and course betting approach, exactly. right? That's I mean, exactly you want a is. sheet that's dirty and covered that with numbers a, and stats? Yes. And I'm just going to cram and just to give people as much information as possible. So that comes out on Friday. Saturday, when the fields are set and we you know, have the brackets uploaded, you get an email and a text that tells you brackets are open. Sunday morning, about two hours before eliminations, you get a reminder email and a reminder text. I'm setting up my That's notifications right now. That's pretty much the best right we now, can do to help. Elon. Because yeah. mine were set up. Mine actually were not set up. I'm setting it up right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think mine are so set that's, up. So that's the biggest key. I get the email. Is, and with a text, you get the text. It has a link, and you can click that link, and it takes you right to your bracket to fill it out. So oh, that's that's the biggest thing. And the thing that I love is – how excited the drivers are, how, I mean, Bob Tasca, like he started, he's the first driver that dove in and did a Tasca nation league. Elite has started an elite league. I think, I don't know if it's internal or for everybody, but you know, um, Courtney was like, yeah, we need to have an elite league. Um, but for me, it's just the interaction, getting people invested. You know, you go to drag race, bracketbonanza.com super easy to fill out and then you're kind of in in the groove and you know we're adding stats we want to make it you know you can get stat information whether you're playing or not that's something else drag racing hasn't had is forward facing stats like baseball reference you'll be able to just go in and i'm hoping that this will become a resource for people that just want to get stat information hey how many races has john force won this year okay we can just go to drag race break up bonanza and just john force how many races has he won and make it searchable and things like that. So it's a thing. We're going to do some really cool things this year. Um, you know, talking to the elite guys about doing a Saturday night bracket fill out party at Vegas in their pit. Oh, cool. Um, having their drivers kind of interact with fans about who they're going to pick. Um, we're talking about, you know, our prizes I think are going to be, we'll do the plaques again, Mike, you got yours handy. Um, we'll do the plaques again. We'll do um, trophies for the four wide cup. This is our first mini series. Uh, if you're the over, if you're the overall, we've got the same plaques again this year, and I'm making an effort to get the drivers to personalize them even more. So, like we just got the, they didn't, we missed the window for the Gator National, so they came in like the Monday after the Gator National. So I'm playing a little catch up, um, but like for the Gator Nationals for Erica, I had her sign. She signed to Erica Ender's first Gator Nationals win. Oh, finally. cool. Yeah, yeah that's we had Jr. and Sean sign their respective funny car and top fuel ladder uh, plaques. Jr. Todd won half of Coletta's first double up. Double up, yeah. And then Sean did the same thing. So making them, awesome. you know, as unique as possible. It's an incredible They're thing nice. that you have going, these, these man. I think are, I'm super nice. excited for you. It's uh, yeah. I I, th I think that they're the. The upside to this, <clears throat> A, what it does for fan engagement, like that is something that yep. our sport historically just hasn't spent enough time on. Like, I, I mean, I look at how our sport really in many ways doesn't look a lot different than it did 50, 60 years ago. And it's right. like, uh, and a lot of it is not, and I'm not talking necessarily about what happens between those two concrete walls. I'm talking mm -hmm. about all around it. And this is one of those things that, we're a little late to the game on, but it's exciting because we need yeah. these type of fan engagement tools to just rich in, enrich the sp experience yeah. that is being a drag racing fan. Like we have to explore yeah. every opportunity to, to make it fun and make it cool to be a drag racing fan. And this is, this is one of those things. I mean, like I said, I've got my household involved and like, it's gotten everybody. I mean, Alicia and I, she was all mad at me over the people I told her to pick. Uh, it was quite <laughs> the deal. Like I've never listened to your picks again ever and i'm like okay well i guess this is the, the well, new thing I, I to get, argue about we also you can let her know if she doesn't want to listen to you she can do the randomizer button and this is something that i think is so cool is if you don't have time to make your picks we have a button that you can just click the randomizer button and it'll fill all four of your categories out for you is Love it completely it. random like it when you hit, that? hit it again and it'll reshuffle it so it's completely and random. So if you don't know anything about Pro Stock Motorcycle, 
You can hit the randomizer. It'll fill out all four brackets, and then you can go back. I call this the Allison McCormick rule, by the way. At the Pro Superstar Shootout, we're still working some things out, and she's like, I like the idea of the randomizer button, but I don't need it to randomize Top Fuel and Funny Car. Can you just make it, like, class-specific? So I actually talked to Aiden, and, you, yeah, he was just like, dude, that's just a bridge too far. He goes, <laughs> it can only randomize, but – Allison, being a true drag racer, a PR person, she realized she can hit the randomizer button. It fills out all four categories, and then she just goes back and edits Top Fuel and Funny Car. And Makes then she sense, has, right? her, yeah. has her, yeah. So you can do that. And that to me is, um, and man, when we were testing it, it was like, bam, you're filling it out, and you would get, it's just like a quick pick for the lottery tickets, but you'd get like, Terry Totten winning a race, but then you hit it again and it had Doug Coletta and then you hit yeah. it again and it had, it, you know, so it, I don't know how it, but it was constantly truly randomizing. And then Randomized. you can go back and it's like, Oh man, you know what? This is random, but I'm a big J.R. Todd fan. I want to go to my funny car and make sure he he's my pick for funny car. But that's again, makes it low hanging fruit. Everybody can play. And then you got skin in the game and I don't know anything I'm the worst. I'm literally right now in my college basketball bracket that I filled out, 19 millionth place. <laughs> my well, wife I, is yeah. like 200,000. She is kicking my ass. Did she pick based on uh, mascots or, or what? I don't know what That's her right. secret sauce is. We have a family contest with, with another family. We have a trophy, and she has actually won um, and come in second. I've never, luckily, knock on wood, I've never come in last place. <laughs> but I'm a next to last guy. My five year old daughter is. I like put some time million. into it. I don't follow college basketball, but you know, right around tournament time, I start Same. paying attention, and I feel like I didn't. You know, I pick Auburn to win the national championship game because they were hot in the SEC. They finished. Bam! Yale boots them first round. Bracket. You and, you and Charles Barkley. <laughs> yeah, just just a crusher <sighs> of the spirit. But I'm still kind of watching because I, you know, I got some teams still alive, and but that's the thing that's so great is it is have those stats. And um, Abby, who handles all our social media marketing, we can run a report right as the brackets close and give you the pie graphs of who is going to win, like who the fans think is going to win. You know, 30% of the people think this That's guy. That's cool to see. But we also do bracket busters, and we get the stats of who people think. And so, like when Jeff Deal won first round, that smoked about 88% of the funny car brackets from being perfect. And we know that. And so we have a bracket buster graphic. Had Buddy Hull at the Gator Nationals, I mean, by eight thousandths of a second, he loses to Task in the first round. <laughs> he would have smoked 99.4% of the brackets. Like, I believe it. Like 20 people picked Buddy to win that round. Obviously, Buddy and all his family. And I <laughs> picked him. But you know, so that's the beauty of the sport is you just – the closest one from the Gators was the Justin Ashley, Tony Stewart first round. It was 59 and a half. You know, it was 50.5 to 49 and a half. Wow. Like it was that close. Dead heat, damn near. Dead heat, um, basically. And that was – I had a tough time with that pick. You yeah, know what I mean? Because it's like – you, you know, Justin, I think, is easily one of the best levers in the sport, um, certainly in the category. Uh, they they have a car that can yeah. win and can run the number. But then you've also got like this intangible part of being full of piss and vinegar and new and fresh yeah. and motivated. And, and it's a good a, car. You know, a it's, it's a car that yeah, finished a great car. second in the world championship last year. Yeah, I mean, you just you're going, OK, there, if the universe is involved in this, they may want Tony Stewart to win this one. You right. know what I mean? And, and the fact and, that Tony left on Justin, that's the thing. If you just right. say, Hey, yeah. all these things, and Tony's going to cut a 21 light that, you know, that's he's, I, he, and I, I'm hopeful that Tony's addition to the sport, him now being involved in drag race bracket bonanza as a pick um, will again, help broaden our reach. Um, but I, I'm excited that it's continuing to work. We're adding people. Gainesville was our biggest race ever. We are adding people race to race. Um, we're now getting over a thousand brackets filled out for races. Awesome. Um, and I think it's we're gonna we'll announce right right after uh, Arizona before we get to the four wides, 
our first um, in-kind sponsor um, that's going to add kickers um, through gift certificates to a variety of race winners. So you're going down to the top five for some races, um, for four wides, for the U.S. Nationals, for some countdown races. We're going to be able to do some random drawings of just like, hey, well, I want to, I want to be a part online. of that. <clears throat> you get a drag illustrator, a three-year subscription to Drag Illustrated for every winner. Okay. We'll, so we'll, like $100 yes, I, would love, I would love to do that. I want that to happen. Yeah. Okay. That, that can so, happen. And then, okay. you know, so I'm hopeful that that's, that's the next domino to fall for us is to hopefully be able to show the passion of our players, which equals the passion of our fans of, Oh, you're supporting drag racing. You're supporting drag race back of Bonanza. I want to support your company. And a hundred percent. It's just, it's just a lot of fun to, think of something as you guys know as entrepreneurs you're thinking of something and then you're making it happen and you're constantly evaluating and i've got um just some insane ideas that are going to you know come out later this year um, that i hope will again take drag race break bonanza take our sport to the next level for fan engagement and content to just again build this whole like like you do wes and mike you do you have Drag Illustrated, the magazine. You have events. You have social media. You have shows. It's a whole. It's a whole ecosystem. Machine, and yeah, I mean, it's. it's, and it's exactly. I think it's important. You know, like it's uh, for me. It's we've always believed that Drag Illustrated magazine was the foundation that the that mm -hmm. we would build other silos upon. Right. Yeah. So it's like drag. We've often said that we feel our flag flies higher in the digital space and the social space because of the legitimacy that is provided by a brick and mortar company, a real yes. tangible product with that employs people and sends out a real tangible product to people all around the world. And then we have since constructed silos on that. And it was always yep. like we, we knew that we wanted to be in the live event space. We knew we wanted to be in the merchandise and apparel space. We knew we wanted to be in the social media and advertising agency, blah, blah, blah. And you, if you can begin to build all those things and have them serve one another in various ways, I think that's like the way the magic happens yeah. because we've intertwined all those entities to where they, they work in unison and mm -hmm. they support one another. And it's, that's, that's when good stuff starts to happen. And we've got merchandise now too. We've got a few, you know, Drag Race Bracket Bonanza um, t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts. Um, and that's, as you guys know, when you're starting something like that and, you know, some guy buys your t-shirt, some guy buys your sweatshirt. You're just like, okay, this is kind of cool. So we'll, we'll add that, um, you know, but to me, we're always open to ideas. We're working on, you know, making it better, making it easier, but it is a little bit of a learning curve. So I want folks to, if you're stumbling around a little bit, not remembering, oh, I got to copy my bracket or do that, you know, give us a little bit of grace. We're trying to make it as, you know, user friendly as possible. But on brand new endeavors like this, you know, don't don't, you know, just just blame me, Wes, if, if Alicia's <laughs> having problems. You know, Elon should have made this more user friendly. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. She'll love that. Send her the answers. Right. And she would she would love to have that. She would love yeah. to. And she would expect it like you. Somebody yeah. should know who wins. Somebody <laughs> should. Know, right. It's, it's she all, tells me all the time. Uh, yeah. She's a finder outer. That's what she says. Yeah. I'm a fine router. I want to find out. And I'm like, okay, yeah. fine. Fair enough. Well, yeah. Hey, Elon, thank you so much for joining hey. us guys. We, we've, we've, we have, uh, we, we've, we've cast a big one here today. We've yeah. had the line in the water for a while. Thank you guys all so much. Elon, we're so happy for you and proud of what you've Appreciate accomplished. It, we're excited to be a part of it uh, for as long as humanly possible. I do want to just take a quick second here. Thank Mike, JT, yeah. uh, Blake for being a part of this episode as always and, and keeping the magic going. I want to remind everybody that this show, the West Buck Show, is brought to you by way of Stroud Safety red line synthetic oils and we literally cannot do this without them support the companies that support us tommy cunningham and his team at stroud safety in oklahoma world-class people that produce a world-class product and i can say the same thing about mark Beatty and the whole gang down in houston at red line synthetic oils these are people that pour their heart and souls and their dollars into the sport of drag racing and it's important that they know you appreciate it so support the companies that support us mike jt thank you guys so much Thanks uh, to all of our guests today, Justin, uh, Justin, Little Country Swanstrom. I, I'm going to keep that nickname whether he likes it or not. Like I love. I'm going to give country. me another one of these. Country. You don't like it? I love it. I love Big Country, Little Country. Uh, it it seems like there's some resistance to it. Mike, but you were having you were having some problems trying to show that plate off. You're like over here to the side yeah. first. It's weird, dude. You know, because like, it's like back. You're like in front of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's weird. It's it's weird. It, it totally put your freaking trophy up, Mike. We get it. You won. Congrats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm another in third one. place. I'm, I'm in third get another place one. in that deal. I, oh. I mean, you guys are over here like, oh, we're third running place away overall. From yeah. In yeah. our league or in the whole thing? Well, our league. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, who's Step in first? Up place? Your game. I, I pick Wes I pick is in a lot first of times. Place. Oh, a lot of times I, 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 I was I gonna check, people. but I always I always pick friends too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh man, I'd like to see him win. Well, and mine's You're like, oh, I just in. talked to him yesterday. He's such a good guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, know what I mean? My and problem is like, picking yeah. upsets. I'm like, oh, this is going to be an upset. No, it's just the chalk usually goes all the way to the finals, <laughs> and I'm left in the dust. I do that on my brackets, too, for NCAA for some reason. This was uh, the first I, year I didn't fill out a bracket for NCAA. Really? Yep. Wow. That's kind of cool, actually. I know. It's kind of weird. I've just you been know? betting on it a lot. I know. This, I know. The, this legal lot, betting I, I in North Carolina is – yeah. You know, we've got to have to shut here. it down. Are there games tonight? Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, leave us a comment. Leave us a, 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 a what's the word? A rating. If you're listening via podcast, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on social media. Uh, be a part of this conversation. It's really important. We go into this every week wanting to kick to be to kickstart the next drag racing conversation. And we can't do it without you guys. So thanks a bunch. We'll see you and next Wednesday. The, and I've right got here. all the podcasts caught up. So, Oh, good job. Yeah. Good time. Good job. About time T about time. <laughs> yeah. How far yeah. back does that go? I don't know. <laughs> uh, whenever the, we started going to the races. Probably. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. you have an excuse. Yeah. You have an excuse. Yeah. yeah. And if you so, email anyways, me, I'll get to that. Stay next tuned, week. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. Talk soon. Later.